Hello boys and girls, I am creating this video just to accompany the already existing section 11 video uh, that you may have hopefully seen before opening this clip up. Now in the previous video I merely described, explained um, what this section is all about and the key theme or the key point that I hope that was clear to you was that this is a, it was a sketch section where you're designing your first draft your ideas as to how your user interface, your u your new user interface, could look like for the organization that you're working for. Now, I'm going to just take this opportunity to just remind you here that, of course, you're working on a market. This is a practice, yeah? This is why I've called this uh, a mock learning MB. And the reason for that, again, is because as a, as a teacher, we can give you whatever feedback we want, advice, help, if it's not the real thing. Now we're not allowed to do that on the real assignment. So on this in this occasion, in the mock, you're working for a doctor's surgery. Uh, in this case, it's Droll's medical practice. But in the real case study, in the real coursework itself, it could be and will be a different company altogether. So what you're trying to get from here is, you're trying to get this design mentality, your ability to use your initiative think outside of the box and get the design elements uh, that you can then transfer onto the next, the real coursework. As I said, because it's a different company, you won't be able to apply everything that you're doing in this to the real thing. So you will have to think carefully about what you can use and what you will have to leave out completely and what you can adapt. So here in this example, as I said in the previous video, you're going to make at least these pages here. There will be actually more than that, and you'll see why in a moment. And you have to do this on A4 pieces of paper, so you're going to sketch it out, and then get it scanned and copy and paste them in here. After each scan, you have to answer as many of these questions as you can. The more you answer, the better your mark will be. So what I've done for this, this video is I've just basically created an example just so you can see what it could look like. So I've done it on the computer just to make it a bit easier to read and understand. So as you can see here, one second, I just want to make sure it's full, yes, full screen, there we go. Um, as you can see, I'm not sure why it's not um, showing the whole screen here. Apologies, I'm going to have to leave it here for now. It's blocking some parts at the bottom, so let's, let's just leave it here. I'm sure you can read it from, from here anyway. So this is the front page. Now you can do it this way where you have the actual page uh, drawn in the middle, the title of the page, just so the examiner knows what it is that you're drawing out here, and then either have details at the bottom, or you can have it coming out from the sides with arrows, so you can annotate it the way you want to. In this example, I've basically um, written down what each item is and give it each, each of these items a number, and then the number is then obviously reflected on the actual sketch itself in the middle so that the examiner can see, okay, one here means that's a page title font, everything up here will be in aerial, bold, font size will be 20, font color will be white, alignment will be centered because it's in the center. Anything that says two, so here at the bottom, that's the main font uh, style, that'll be aerial again, font size 16 this time, blue and left aligned because it's on the left. And, and so on and so forth, so I've basically put all the key information at the bottom and put numbers instead. Now, some of you will like to do this. Some of you will prefer to have boxes coming out from the sides and the bottom, maybe even some parts at the top, and actually have arrows coming in, yeah? But remember, you have to do this on paper by hand. I've only done it on the computer just so you can see it a little bit clearer. And um, just to give you an idea. Now, obviously, you can see this is a welcome page. So all I'm going to have is a title, and I've just put welcome to draws in medical practice. I've got a main... Uh, menu button here and the company logo will go here now this background here can you see i've got two different sections now some of you may actually have a bar at the top to actually have some color so yeah, i want you to imagine here that this is going to be blue so you see it says eight so we go down here it says eight design accent sky blue bar to add contrast to the page color also matches the logo so the logo here will have color schemes that match up with that now, some of you will have a bar at the top and at the bottom some of you may want to have a bar on the left hand side instead or left and right or nothing at all. But the thing is, you have to think about something because if I had it all white, it'd be boring. Even if I had it all blue, it'd be too, maybe too simple. 
and so therefore I've added a, a sense of design, something to, to make the page look a little bit more interesting that also uh, encompasses the, the, the house style that can be found on the logo itself. So the first page is very, very simple. Title, which is a welcome message, or it could just be the simple, simply the name of the practice itself. Um, a button and a logo, that's it. Now I've actually added a little bit at the bottom here. Please ask for assistance if you require help. The reason for that, Actually, I can write this down. You can see accessibility features. So I can actually put down here number four there as well. Now, you're, you have to highlight everything and anything that you can highlight. But remember, you don't need to actually put any color in this yet. You don't need to put any uh, pictures in there yet. It is literally a black and white document of sketching uh, what your design will look like. So this is the first page. Now, if you imagine this is the the page that the customer, the client, the patient sees when they walk into this organization. They click on the main button, the main menu button, so then it should take them to the main menu. And look what I say here, hyperlink, button to go to the page identified in the button, so main menu. So when you click on that, it's gonna to go to main menu. You can see I've changed the title there. You'll notice the box at the top is exactly the same, but I've changed, it says page title, main menu, and I put it in quotation marks so you know that that's what it's going to say. And the real thing, I'm not gonna say page title. I'm just gonna have the words, main menu. Now also the one indicates that this is going to be all in aerial, bold, it's going to be size 20, it's going to be white and it's going to be in the middle, centered. I've got four, sorry, six buttons in the middle, the logo's moved to the bottom to the bottom right corner, the assistance uh, section is, uh, you know, the information here at the bottom left hand side. Before I carry on further boys and girls, just bear this in mind, this is just an example. Please do not fall into the trap of copying exactly what mine looks like. You may actually have your buttons as squares or circles. You may have your buttons on the right hand side or on the left hand side. You may have your buttons all going down in the middle and have nothing on the sides. You may have buttons uh, on the corners. Whatever it is, just come up with a theme that matches the rest of the document itself. The rest of the document, sorry. What I mean to say is the rest of your user interface. So you'll notice that as I go down, my logo from now on does not change. On the front page, because it's the first page, the welcome page, it's in the middle. But after that, the logo stays in the same spot all the way down. The title is always in the same spot all the way down. The color scheme, I'm gonna have blue at the top here, white in the middle here. You can see I've put seven here, seven means background, white background, color to match the logo. So I've got white here, blue here. I haven't actually put any colors in. I haven't actually put the logo in. This is just a sketch. So you can see here, Main menu, the customer will now see six buttons. You, if they click here, it's gonna to go to the business hours page. Click here, it's gonna to go to the appointments page. Click here, it's gonna to go to the find a find me and pharmacy page, charity page, notices, and exit. Now exit will go back to, hopefully, back to the main menu. Oh, sorry, the welcome page. If I go further down, you'll see the first one, and the order doesn't really matter, but I've put down the business hours page instead, so again, I've organized it at the top, and it says business hours here, same color scheme. Buttons have been moved to the right here, and I've got exit and main menu. On the left-hand side, it's just gonna say opening hours, Monday to Friday, I've just left it at blanks for now because obviously I'll have to do research to type in later. Saturday, Sunday closed. And here, main menu will go to the main menu, which is this here, okay? Or someone might just finish, okay, you know, someone, a customer might come in and all they want to know is what time they finish on a particular day. So they just, they just check it. Once they know the answer, they can just press exit and it'll go back to the welcome page ready for the next customer or patient to look at. So always think about where these are going. You're making your own, almost like an app, yeah? And what you're trying to design is something that's going to be very, very easy to use. Even someone who's never used a computer before should be able to use their fingers and click it. Now notice here I put down, Number three, method of interaction. Users will use his or her finger to press the button. So I've made it very, very clear that this is a touchscreen user interface. So that's my business hours page. Next one, you'll see again, the design hasn't changed. I've moved the buttons here and it says the appointments page. Now the appointments page has to now inevitably have three new pages. And on the task here, you'll see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages when in fact I've got 10, because this is gonna have someone coming in to sign in, just to let the doctors know that they've actually come in on time for the, for the appointment. There has to be a section where customers or patients will want, to, will want to book an appointment. So book a new appointment, or there could be an occasion where someone wants to cancel an appointment. So that's why I've got three different options here underneath the appointments category. So sign in, book a new appointment, 
cancel appointment. And I've got the, these two buttons here at the same place from early on. Yeah, main menu, exit. And as a result, I've had to make three more sketches from this. Sign in. So here we go, signing in. And here, I've actually put in some fields. So basically, these boxes indicate where the customer or the patient will type in their name, date of birth, postcode. They will then search for themselves and then sign in once they have the details confirmed. And that's it. They'll know, the receptionist will know now that they've come in. But if they click on book a new appointment, it should then go to this page. So new appointments, it says appointments, new appointments. Same information, but this time I've got a calendar entry box here, which basically me, will, indicates, again, I don't need to draw it, you know, ex precisely how it would be in the real thing. This is just an idea. So I'm just saying that it's going to be like a calendar. So it's going to say March or February or whatever it is. And a customer or the client will be able to just click on the date and it'll tell them if it's available or not. No, notice I've put an extra button here that says book appointment because once they've put the details in and have found the date that they want and the time, they'll have to click book appointment. And the last one was cancel an appointment. So the cancel appointment I've basically copied exactly the same as this, but I've put search and cancel appointments instead. Then I've got the find me a pharmacy. So this one's easy. Enter a postcode, postcode, a little box or field for them to type in a postcode and Google Maps will then pop up here. One after that is charity page and I've just kept kept it simple I've put two charities instead so I've, I've come up with a simple sentence the charities we're currently working with include and then we've got charity one link charity two link and I've just said here link to official website click on the links above to help support the charitable causes that's it exit main menu same as before and then I've got a notices page now I don't need to say what the notices are I've just lit I've just I've just indicated where those notices will be so we've got a title there title there and same thing so you can see there isn't, there isn't really much to do. Most of your marks will come from your thinking of your house style. So the layout, the arrangement of things. Notice how I've got white space so that things are organized nice and neatly. Thinking about consistency. So there will be some consistency. Notice how all my buttons, the main ones, are always on the right-hand side. My logo is on the bottom right-hand corner. That the blue bar will be always at the top with white headers. And the main area will be white. So again, I said this before and I'll say it again. Do not copy this. It is just an indicator. It's just giving you an idea. You don't need to do it exactly the same as mine. You may have the logo above it here as an example to just to differentiate it and have your button underneath it. You may have your logo on the left hand side and have the button on the right hand side. You may have the logo larger to fill this area here and have the button on the right hand side. Whatever it is, you just need to think of a way that looks like it's a professional user interface designed for the company that you're working for, something that you will be proud of. Again, to finish off here, all sketched here, yeah, boys and girls, this has to be sketched, not done on computer, yeah, like I have done here. This I've done on the computer just to make it easy to see. Please feel free to pause on any of these slides to help you understand how these slides could look. But remember, you won't learn anything by copying this word for word, you know, exactly uh, as it is on the mock. If you don't understand the point of the of these uh, tasks that, uh, you know, that you need to, to gain these skills from and then transfer over to the real thing. Because I assure you right now, the real thing will not be a doctor's surgery. So, for example, booking appointments may not be appropriate to use on the business that you will eventually be working for. Um Find a pharmacy, for example, may not be appropriate either because if you're being asked to work for, um, let's just say, a police uh, station or a, um, a post office, you're not going to have a section that asks um, whether you know the customer that comes in is looking for a pharmacy. So you need to think outside the box and, and think how can you use these um, in your design. As I said, think about consistency, Color schemes, position of items, arrangement of items, your buttons, uh, the shape, the size, and how you're going to help people who may have accessibility needs. Before I finish off here, I will say um, two other things. I will try my best to save this onto the Google Drive folder that I have. The link should be underneath the video. Uh, if you're working from school, then I'll put it in the shared folder. 
And the last item I wanted to mention was, and the thought has just slipped my mind, let me just think here very carefully. Um, mind is completely out of my mind. Um, but remember what I said, you are annotating the way you want to. So I've put it down on the bottom. You can have it on the left or the right with arrows. In fact, the more different it is, the better it will be. Oh yeah, I've just remembered what it is. This is just a draft, boys and girls, which means when you start to do your real thing, you will be allowed to, you know, um, change it. You will be allowed to uh, change your mind is what I'm basically trying to say. If you decide when you come to making the real thing that actually I'm not happy with the shape of the button that I've shown in the sketches, I want to change it to this, that's completely fine. All the examiner is looking for is, is, is a journey. So if your sketches have some form of resemblance to your final product, it's fine. If it's completely different, then you may find it difficult to justify it. And if it's, on the flip side, if it's exactly the same, there's an argument that they could say that you made the real thing first, and then you went into the sketches uh, retrospectively, which actually you could lose marks for or even fail. So it's completely natural to have a first draft and then change it slightly when you do the real thing. So don't even think um, too carefully. Too, don't, don't spend too much time thinking that your draft or your sketches here have to be perfect. They don't. This is just your first step. It's a draft, it's your initial design, it's your starting point, okay? Hopefully that makes sense, and uh, you enjoy doing this. As I said, please, I cannot make this, I can't reiterate this uh, point uh, clear enough. These must be hand-drawn um, as neat as you can on A4 pieces of paper, and then scanned in and placed into section number 11.